right. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Good. What did y'all have for breakfast? Mike and Ike's. Mike and Ike's. <laughs> That's it. Waffles. Coffee. What else? Waffles. Bagel, Coffee. sausage, egg, and bagel. Sam. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> nice. I had a cheese omelet. It was so. Wh why? Why did I have a cheese omelet? You were hungry. I was hungry. What about? What did you have again? I had Belgian waffles. And why did you have those? Because my husband made them. Okay. What did somebody else have? Coffee. Did you have anything else? Nothing in your coffee. Cereal. No. Why did you have the cereal? Really, because it was easy. <laughs> Can somebody else relate what they did this morning and tie it maybe into this graph here? I haven't labeled the axes. Energy level? What did you say? Energy level. So where would I put energy levels on this graph, do you think? Like, so we have a y and an x-axis. OK, so we have energy level on the y. And what might go on the X? Time. Okay, time. And so, can somebody else give me like a complete sentence regarding maybe, how about breakfast and lunch and tie it into this graph? So, sure. the first peak would probably be after you've eaten breakfast, then you... Okay, yeah. yeah. And then you start to use up your energy and then you go and you eat lunch and it goes to the next peak and then you go back down and you eat dinner. Yeah, so throughout the day we have this flux in energy level. So you eat something to re-energize yourself, right? So you need to get back more energy. What about in, in our bodies? So we've talked about like our entire bodies, but like what if I went into like a specific cell? Anyone know what I'm getting at? How, does that thing look familiar at all? Like, what, is, what does that thing look like? Just be honest, what do you think it looks like? Maybe, well, look, okay, maybe a golf club? So is there any particular cell where we find something, like a molecule that looks like a golf club? Does anyone? Yeah. Muscle cell. Muscle cells. So what do they, what do they have in actin, muscle cells? Actin and myosin. Okay, which, does anyone know which one it is? Myosin. It's myosin. Yeah. So, what does myosin do? It forms. It helps the contraction of the muscle. It helps to contract muscle. So now let's bring this back to energy levels. So in our bodies, we need to constantly be eating food. Well, not constantly. I agree. Yeah. That's another story. So we need to eat food to like recoup that energy. So after myosin, it sort of expends that energy. How is it going to get its energy back? What is it? Calcium. Calcium, um, know, can somebody think of something else? So calcium doesn't add the energy. ATP. All right, so ATP. And in fact, ATP is the energy currency within our cell. So as the myosin is going through these cycles, so as your muscle contracts, it cycles, and it's going to use ATP, and then it needs more food, energy. What does the myosin need more of? Food or energy? What is the energy source within our cells? ATP. So what is the energy source within our cells? Mitochondria. Mitochondria make? Mitochondria make? ATP. They make ATP. Mitochondria make? ATP. Mitochondria make ATP. And the myosin needs what? ATP. The myosin needs ATP. How does it get that energy out of the ATP? Takes off a phosphate. It takes breaks off a breaks phosphate. The bond. Breaks the bond. So, as a matter of fact, I have an ATP molecule here, and I would like two volunteers to come up and help me with this. All right, Ed, come on up. Step right up, please. And we have Beth. Thank you, Beth. All right. So, carefully, I want you to hold, pick up this side, and I want you to grab onto this, and. I want you to hold it under tension. So one hand, hold it under tension. Just if you hold it under tension, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. It'll rotate. It'll rotate again. Okay. So we have it under tension to actually 
simulate intramolecular forces, in fact. So there we go. What do we need to break apart this ATP molecule? What, what do we have to do? Hint, hint. Can you guys read this? Hydrolyze, hydrolyze it. Hydrolyze it. And do we have anything, do we know of anything that can hydrolyze? Enzyme. We got an enzyme, we got an enzyme called ATPase. ATPase. What is the enzyme called? ATPase. And what is it going to do? Hydrolyze the ATP. It's going to hydrolyze the ATP. Would you be so kind as to, as to join us? Be the enzyme. Here? Be the enzyme, be the enzyme, be the enzyme. All right. I'll let you put this on. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> So let's, let's predict what's going to happen. So you're holding this under tension right now. So when she, when, oh, no, you got to wear this. Right. Come on. You look, you look so nice today. Come on, get, get, show us some love. All right. Thank you very much. So what is going to happen when she hydrolyzes ATP? Beth is going to get hurt. Why is, <laughs> why is Beth going to get hurt? Because the other phosphates are going to fall my way and we're going to go off. Because there's energy stored in these now because we're pulling. Okay, so we got energy actually stored in this, so you're going to fly off. And I have another way, so let's assume for a second that this rubber band also represents the ATP molecule. And I'm, I'm holding this rubber band under tension. And would you believe it, I have another... So another enzyme called ATPase. And what is that going to do? Hydrolyze. It's going to hydrolyze. Who wants to be the ATPase? No, I will. All right. So, what is going to happen when she hydrolyzes this <laughs> ATP molecule? What's going to happen to the rubber band? It's going to break into two parts. All right, let's see that. So it broke into two parts. And when it broke, what happened to like the different pieces of rubber band? It released the tension. So the so she, she she cut it, it released tension and energy. Energy. Yeah, do we know what what kind of energy? So I'm moving around, what kind of energy Kinetic. does this represent? Kinetic energy. So we're getting energy output by breaking this rubber band. And would you be so kind as to get some energy output from that ATP? Hold it under tension. Don't, you'll be fine. You'll be, all right, tell you what, I'll be back here. You can hit me, all right? I'm serious. <laughs> Don't, pull it the other way, actually. So, yeah, let's flip this around and hydrolyze. Nope, pull the, pull the thing. Yep. All right. <laughs> all right. So, so we have the myosin molecule over there, and what does it need? What does the myosin molecule need? So now we're going to tie it back into this graph. It needs ATP, and why does it need ATP? It needs the energy from breaking that phosphate. Yeah, actually, thank you very much. You you can put you can put that down, and Carmen, if you want. to. You can hold on to that if you like. Yeah, it's a beautiful sign. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, I want to hear from somebody who wasn't up here. I want one of you to describe what actually happened. Tell me the story of what happened while we were up here. And you can work together. Uh, there was potential energy represented by the by the by the stretched um, molecule. Okay, and what was the molecule called? Um, ATP. Okay, so we had this stretched molecule ATP, and what what was the last thing he said? So we there was stretched, potential, stretched it. Potential stretched. energy represented in, in the phosphate bonds, uh, that such that when they were uh, broken, when they were hydrolyzed, that energy was released and it became kinetic energy, did you, did you say? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. So molecules have these intramolecular forces that keep them in, oh yeah, go for it. 
You have a question? We were just going to add that the, oh. the ATPase yeah. is what broke that bond, came in and hydrolyzed. Okay. And, and broke it. All right. So let, let, me, let me put it this way. So in order to get the energy out of the ATP molecule, we need what? ATPase. You need your ATPase because the ATPase does what? Hydrolyzes. It hydrolyzes the ATP. The ATP. So let's come back to this myosin molecule and let's make a prediction. I'm telling you that this myosin molecule has to cycle through its contraction cycle. So when its energy is high, we could say, ready to <coughs> contract. Now, tell me, how would I label like the trough of this graph? Like, if up here it's ready to contract, what happened to bring it down here? It would have been broken. <coughs> what would have been broken? The bond, the phosphorus. So the bond and the ATP would have been broken. And, and, but what about, so put this in terms, can you put it in terms of the myosin molecule itself? So the contraction occurred, right? And, and, and as a result, the energy was expended. So the contraction occurred. Well, I'm going to use the other one. Sorry. So the myosin contracted. So. We added energy, oh, yep, yeah. oh, okay, you just, thank you. So we added energy to the myosin molecule through ATP. We got it to this high energy state, and then once it contracted, it went back to this low energy state. So if I want to get it back up here, what do I got to do? Need more food, need more energy. More energy. I need more food, I need more, come on, ATP, myosin, ATP. With, it needs more ATP, ATP, because ATP is the energy currency within ourselves. We eat food, we break down that food, and eventually we get out ETP that myosin can use. What did we need to break apart that ATP molecule? What did you need? ATPase. We needed ATPase. In order for myosin to be energized by ATP, what must it have? ATPase activity. It has to have means of breaking the, the, the phosphate bond through, through, the, through the enzyme, through the hydrolysis enzyme, through the ATPase. So somehow on this molecule, myosin has, or next to the molecule, it has what? That, so when you broke apart that rubber band, what did you use? ATPase. You used an ATPase. If myosin is going to get that energy from the ATP molecule, it has to have an ATPA. It has to have an, NA, an ATPase. So all molecules within our body, including myosin, if they want to get the energy out of ATP, they have to have a pair of scissors like that, or they have to have carbon. They have to have an ATPase. All right. Maybe that's the most important protein in our body. Well, I'm not going to steal Ed's thunder, but you know, for homework, we're, I want you guys to read about excitation contraction coupling, and then we're going to pick up with that tomorrow.